Hi, welcome to My WeHo World and our edition of 28 Minutes. We want to thank you, Joel Q, and Jan Foster for letting us have this opportunity again this week. Thank you very much. Uh, today we are here on the corner of, where are we? La Brea and First. La Brea and First. And my special guest is Bryden Lando. Did I get your name right? You did. You did. <laughs> would, you t would you please tell them what you do and why we're even holding hands with you right now? Uh, I am a artist and clothing designer and I have a uh, I have an exhibition up right now um, it's a solo exhibition at a lab art gallery you did you hear that okay we got a little vehicle in far away let's start walking this way so we can come out behind the little Jeep hi guys we're back here um, he was telling us that he was doing an art exhibi exhibition over at the art lab is that right lab art gallery thank you it's the lab art gallery which again we're on the corner of La Brea and second street here in Los Angeles we got to wait for the light babe and we're about to come across the street and go how many what four four uh, four buildings down oh uh, yeah just uh, just a half a block down Head south and head on over. Oh, he wants us to move over. <laughs> We're coming across the street, Randy. Uh, we also want to thank Randy for filming today. Thank you, Randy. If you want to turn around and say hi to yourself, you can. But <laughs> So uh, let's get this interview started with you and, and find out who the heck you are and why L.A. is so on fire for you. Because that is the truth. You're, dude, you're doing it. Tell us about your artwork. What, uh, what inspires you? Um, all kinds of things. I think mostly just uh, social commentary, um, sort of uh, my my daily encounters with the world and my sarcasm coming out on canvas. Have you always been uh, this way as a child and as an adult, or did it mesh together? Oh uh, yeah, I think so. What inspired your shirt? By the way, can we get a pan on his shirt real quick? What brought this about? Um, it's a pretty obvious statement. <laughs> <laughs> it says you know, the you white can, man is the devil. You can take it at uh, face value. <laughs> I had a I had a drug encounter one night, and this guy he said, "Hey, I'll give you some more drugs if you strip down naked and you put on a Indian headband." <laughs> Guess who? Hell yeah, I did it. <laughs> so that's what your shirt reminds me of, and I'm gonna have to get one sometime. <laughs> um, we're here. Gallery. Please tell us about the gallery a little bit. Uh, the gallery is amazing. It's um, it's definitely my favorite gallery in LA, which is why I'm uh, very fortunate and honored to have my first uh, solo exhibition here. So um, yeah, they have they have amazing um, they have an amazing roster of artists that show here, and uh, it's the largest street art gallery in the nation, and uh, they put on amazing events. How did uh, how did you get hooked up with these guys? Uh, through some mutual friends, and then uh, Iskender, the owner, uh, saw my art and really liked it. So it was a it was a pretty good fit for the gallery. It turns out. You said uh, where'd you run into him, uh, Iskender? He is, I believe, the owner of this building. Uh, yeah, he's a friend of a friend. So uh, so we were introduced introduced through a mutual friend. Nice, nice. Um, okay, my film guys, point at me. Let's get inside. So we're gonna go inside real quick. Cool. As we walk into this incredible gallery, we have Lando artwork all around us. Randy, if you want to do a little pan out while I ask him a couple more questions on all this. How about starting with this one that he's looking at? Uh, smells like Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Tell me about this. Uh, this was a Kurt Cobain inspired piece. Um, I, uh, my general process is I take, um, I take different wheat paste collage so it's sort of a wheat paste collage of uh, sort of the life of um, kind of a timeline of uh, Kurt Cobain's life and then uh, this was my this was my uh, take on it incredible I saw on the internet uh, was it Holyfield wearing your t-shirt um, and it was put think, on one of his yeah, shows I think, I think Holyfield yeah yeah I think that was one I have a lot of um, I'm really fortunate to have a lot of great uh, sports figures and uh, you know actors and musicians that wear my clothing line, so it's really uh, you know I feel honored when when I see it on somebody I admire. <laughs> All right, hold on, I'm getting my questions out. First of all, I'm being told to move around a little bit here. <laughs> Randy, like, get over here, get over here. <laughs> 
Though, look, I wanted to save this one for the end, but you, you instigated it, uh, and I want to get it correct, so I'm going to cheat here. How do you deal with so many people having different impressions of your artwork? Um, I think that's, that's one of the fun things about my art, is uh, everybody can sort of interpret it a different way. I make a point never to explain my art too much. Um, so, you know, if it means something to uh, someone and something uh, completely different to somebody else, I think that's great. So, never want to ruin it for anybody, you know? I like that. So, where do your gorgeous eyes come from, mom or dad? I think neither. My mom is green, my dad is brown. The milkman. Never mind. I'm not, I take that back. <laughs> um, tell us real quick, where did you grow up? I grew up in uh, Maui, Hawaii. Been in L.A. for about 11 years now. Hold on. You're Maui, Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Why would you even come all the way to the States for that, over here? Oh, my God. Uh, there's not much career opportunity um, you know, in, in the islands unless you want to work at a resort your whole life. And uh, you know, I had bigger aspirations. So. In schooling, did you go all the way or part of the way? Uh, part of the way. I actually quit. Um, I quit for a job in uh, the film industry down here. So that's what moved me down to L.A. Hold on, would you walk me over here and explain that yeah. self a little bit? What were you saying? Uh, I was saying I, um, I quit school about halfway through to, uh, for a, a job in the film industry down here. Okay, what were you doing in the film industry? That I, I started off in production because uh, I was studying film and I, I started off in production um, but I had always uh, I had I'd been doing my art since I was a little kid and never really stopped so while I was doing film production I uh, continued my art and then I uh, just ended up getting back into it um, over the years. Is there a place that we can go and find some of your uh, beginning arts because this is incredible you were doing art as a child? Yeah, no, you'd have to talk to my mom for that one. Are you serious that she has all your stuff? I think she still has some stuff, yeah. Uh, now I'm in love with his mom. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about the milkman thing, mom. I, I was just kidding. Uh, now, from uh, okay, so you had the art, you had the art bug in you from the from the very go, get go. Yeah. Uh, then you went and you said you were in film school for a little bit? Yeah. And then from there, how did you go, and, we're, and as we get ready, would, when you answer this next question, would you walk us towards one of your most favorite projects right now, yeah. uh, one of your artworks? Uh, but uh, what took you from film to mainstream, I'm going to be an artist? Um, I actually, uh, I, I got into clothing before I, uh, before I got back into art full time. I've been, um, I have my own uh, clothing manufacturing company. Well, so, tell us about that, tell us about uh, Well, I do private label design for a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of different companies, so I manufacture all kinds of Wait, things. Wait, you do what? Uh, private label uh, manufacturing. That What's means that? Uh, that means I uh, meet with companies. Um, we uh, work on designs together. I design. I do a full package. Um, I do a full package uh, delivery for companies. So I'll do everything from conceptual to design to manufacturing to packaging and delivery. What's conceptual design? Blah blah blah. What? Uh, so I come up with the uh, initial ideas. Uh, we uh, sort of check it off with you know their needs, uh, the needs of whatever company it is I'm working for, and then um, and then I manufacture it for them, um, both overseas and domestic, uh, depending on the product. And what do then, you mean uh, by manufacture? How do you manufacture? Uh, I have a bunch of different facilities that I partner with, so uh, factories in China and uh, factories here in LA. You're your own Tommy Hilfiger, huh? <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to work my way there. Yeah. Is this what the schooling also helped you eventually get through, or uh, was that just film school, or did, and nothing to do with fashion? Or did, um, was there any schooling in fashion? Yeah, I actually took my first sewing and uh, pattern making class when I was still in high school. I, uh, I actually, was that your favorite? Um, it was. It was always an interest of mine. Um, and then I started doing uh, I started doing some uh, freelance design work uh, while I was still in film production. What did you do during that? Um, I worked for a few different companies, so um, so I would do design, graphic design, um, and art and stuff. What did your artwork look like then? Um, it always had a similar air to what you see here, but it was, um, I think I was doing a little bit more illustration-based stuff okay. back then. Uh, can you explain illustration-based? Uh, more line drawing, so if... Uh, you got something for some, example? Something like this, for instance. Something like this. Oh, cool. Wow, that's sweet. 
How old is that picture? Uh, that I did about two months ago. <laughs> I'm not allowed to cuss. <laughs> so nice. I, uh, yeah, most most of the stuff for the solo show, um, most of the stuff for the solo show is done in the past six months. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a, yeah? Do you have a favorite? No. How about a top three? I've learned not to get too attached to my art. I do like the uh, the shark with the gold tooth there. I notice on the um, internet a lot of people like that one. Oh, really? Yeah, you see a lot of them standing and getting their picture taken in front of it. That's good. To that hear. is rock solid. Uh, what? The, this is for Randy Lemons, who's filming. He is in love with your surfing saves souls. Would you take us over there and explain yeah, that to sure. us? Um, this is sort of a history of surfing through collage work here, um, and uh, it's sort of how I feel. I surf a lot whenever I can, okay. um, which isn't that much these days, but uh, it's also kind of a terrible summer, but hopefully the <laughs> winter will be good. Right. Uh, did you pick that up? Did you drive that vehicle, or how'd you come up with that vehicle? Uh, no, it's just a hearse, you know, so I just thought it would be funny <laughs> to... Um, you know, the, I think the imagery kind of speaks for itself. Sure, of course. The uh, pictures in the background, uh, where do you come up with those? Uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, old books, um, some stuff on the internet, uh, wherever I can find media, you know. I try and, I try and source cool pictures that aren't, um, that aren't too well known, you know. Sure. And where, if we can ask, where do you see yourself five years from now? Um, well, I just launched a new brand, uh, a new clothing brand, and that was actually, um, we had a, the night of the installation here, uh, the night of our opening event, we had uh, a big installation with my clothing here as well. Um, so a lot, of the, a lot of the shirts, like you see this, for instance, will tie into a particular painting. So, um, so it's more of a capsule-based collection. It's called Drones Clothing. And um, I would really love to grow that brand over the next five years. Drone so, clothing? Drones, plural. Drones. Uh, so, yeah, you can find it at dronesclothing.com. And, um, yeah, so I'd really love to grow that and just continue doing what I'm doing, you know? Do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Um, I would just say keep at it. Just keep getting your stuff out there as much as you can. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to put it out to the world. and. Um, go after and do what you love doing. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Would you show us another, some more of your paintings, please, and tell us about them? This one is fun. Uh, this is all like vintage adult personal and sex ads in the back of this uh, girl's kissing. Oh, <laughs> that one was fun to do. Um, yeah, this is 24 karat gold leaf on the shark tooth there. Um, I really like this one. Um, this was Jim Morrison here. So this is sort of like the Kurt Cobain piece I showed you earlier. Yeah. It's sort of the history of the doors and uh, Jim Morrison's life and um, stuff like that. We have Pirate Jesus over here, which was just kind of random. I was just laughing to myself one day and <laughs> decided to do a pirate collage. Nice. Um, how long does how long did this take to make? Uh, this took about generally these pieces um, between all the layers take a couple weeks. Okay. Something like that. I usually work on a few at a time. All right. Uh, one of our producers also, and I'm glad we're looking. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, one of our producers said you have to ask him about this. And is it a light or life? Champagne. Oh, Champagne Life. It is life. It's an F. <laughs> champagne Life on a 40-ounce budget. I just feel like uh, a lot of people live that lifestyle here in L.A. And, uh, and I did it to kind of this uh, fun 90s gangster rap era. Slam! It was that easy. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, I think we had written you like a a novel about this picture already. So oh, what really? you just said was too simple. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna stick to yours. <laughs> Sorry, not that deep. I guess. <laughs> yes, you are, because it shows in your beautiful artwork. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, did I ask you what you're doing? What do you see yourself doing five years from now? You did. And what did you say? 
I said, uh, I hope five years from now I continue uh, my brand, Drones Clothing. Um, I'd really love to see that grow and then um, just keep doing art shows. Would you tell them again your clothing line to come out? Uh, now you see where I was going with this? Uh, my new clothing line is called Drones. And it's, uh, yeah, dronesclothing.com. You can find it on the web. You heard that. Uh, we're going to continue our interview with Iskander. Oh, Iskander. Am I getting it right? <laughs> but I'm not going to say his last name because I don't want to insult him. However, we're going to walk through the gallery and find this gentleman and continue our interview. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to say goodbye or anything right now, but will you walk us over yes. to your... Uh, and do you want to tell us about this theater? Or I call it a, Yeah, I call it a theater, but yeah, a gallery. Uh, the gallery is uh, it's sort of split up into two different sections. This front area is... Um, generally where they have the uh, the solo shows for new artists or whatever uh, current exhibition is going on and then the back is usually just the uh, permanent collection so um, so yeah we did my event in the front space here and um, back here you'll find uh, a pretty good representation of a lot of the artists Iskander works with. How long was your artwork up for for showing? Um, this past month. Okay a whole month? Um, about probably probably three weeks after after we take it down, maybe three weeks to a month, something like that. And how uh, who who and how do you get the word out to those? Uh, would that be Iskander who does that? Um, he has an amazing uh, uh, company that he partners with called uh, Mink Society, and they did a great job of uh, promoting the event. And um, great people, they uh, their crowd is amazing. So uh, we had. We had an awesome event. <laughs> That's great. Uh, we're going to show a couple little clips and pictures that we took of that night when we were here. We came about five minutes early. And be honest, were you okay with us showing up a little early? Oh, yeah. That's right. The whole night was kind of a whirlwind, you know. Uh, you did but, wonderful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. We, we loved filming you. And uh, let's continue with this interview. And let's go find Iskander up here. Where are you, sir? Let me suffer. Iskander. Is, is Iskander. I thought I was trying to say it right. Iskander Lem Suffer. Is that it? <laughs> we are now about to talk to Iskander Lem Suffer. And let me make sure I got the name right. Did I get the name right? Yes, you have. No. Yes, you have. <laughs> Where are you from? Morocco. Holy crap, hold on, hold on, let me, I'm gonna sit down, I wanna come and sit down here with you real quick. Oh, uh, look, I'm at the, I'm at the boss's table. Thank you for having us and allowing... Thank you for coming. Oop, now I'm back down there. Um, would you please tell us where we are in the name of your building? We are at LabArt Los Angeles. We are the nation's largest street art gallery. <laughs> the largest in LA. Uh, this is basically how I came to know your lab, um, your gallery. Around LA, we would see uh, notorious artwork all over the electrical boxes all over LA. And uh, one of the one of the most popular names was, I believe, is Alec. What I mean, am, I, am I right with that? Alec Monopoly. Yeah, Alec Monopoly. I saw I saw him on I saw him on the internet, um, but we all in LA saw his artwork on every electrical box in LA. So I'm doing laundry at four in the morning, and then I drive up the street and I see the same artwork in this gallery. So I have had my eye on you for about two years now, and uh, finally grew the courage to come in and see if I could meet you. And thank you, thank you, thank you for having us. Um, would you please tell us how long you have been here? Uh, the gallery has been open for almost three years now. Um, we have 26 different street artists, uh, mostly local. Now we have some artists that we've started bringing in from the East Coast, mostly from Miami and New York. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's doing great. It's very colorful. It's uh, when I come to work in the office in the morning, I feel like a kid in a candy store. Um, it's not work for me, it's fun. Um, we have a very eclectic group of artists. Um, each one has their own different identity. Um, I mean, we could start with some examples. This first piece here. 
Oh, what did you say? What is this? This first piece here is by a young artist named Skylar Gray. He's 13 years old. Get the hell out. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, he's the nation's youngest working street artist uh, in the nation's largest street art gallery. His pieces came in around, I want to say a year ago, his first two pieces, they both sold in less than 24 hours. And then a month later, we had two more pieces, exact same story. No. And uh, everything is history from then. Um, but we also have, I mean, we can do screw tape from New York. We have Mar, which we're giving a solo show in November. Um, another Skylar Gray piece. This kid is so talented. I mean, I'm seeing what he's doing now when he's 13. Imagine what he'll be doing when he's 20 or 13 25. 13 years old. 13 years old. He actually did that when he was 12. <laughs> um, Alec Monopoly that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of his most iconic figures, which is the Monopoly man. Um, but of course, being his... Um, Alex, uh, most of his pieces speak about how the economy is so bad and how the uh, Monopoly man is always treated very badly. Um, and I guess we all see ourselves in the Monopoly man where, you know, some people find it difficult to pay some bills or at the end of the month to make ends meet. Um, let's move on. This is Louis XXX. He is a street artist from New York. Um, he's been living in LA for the past 10 years now, so basically LA is his home. Um, now, did you find him or did he find you? I found him. How? Uh, actually, through another artist, which we're going to look at his artwork. His name is Gregory Siff. Okay. Gregory Siff came in here before the gallery opened to bring in artwork. Louis XXX had a truck, so he was helping him move. That is one of Gregory's pieces. See that over there? Wow. And, um... Now, did you find Gregory, or, was, or did y'all find each other? Uh, we found each other. Gregory and I met even before I even thought of opening the gallery. Wow. Uh, we met at the Standard Hotel in downtown as Gregory was doing a mural for them. Okay. Um, so Gregory was bringing pieces. Louis helped him bring the pieces here. And Gregory said, by the way, Louis is an artist. And I said, let me check out your work. The moment I saw his pieces, I said, you're in. You're in the gallery. <laughs> and, you know, here we are. Um, uh, I was asking someone after I left. Are you my favorites or are they all your favorites? You know what? They're all my favorites. Okay. I can play favoritism with my artists. All right. And I, forgive me. I won't even put you there. Um, but, uh, okay, let's say someone like myself. And uh, now I need you to be straight with me on this one. What do you say to those who are on a dollar store budget but come into your gallery and would like to start collecting art? What would you, besides save your money, what would you recommend to them? Uh, well, the thing being is... Being an art collector, yeah. The thing is, a lot of the pieces that we have in here are quite affordable. Um, so for a relatively small amount of money, you can actually start a small collection. Okay. Now, I also do payment facilities in mm -hmm. which... You can pay 50% of the piece, and then you have three months to pay the rest. Okay, and do they they don't take it home until it's paid for? They don't for, take it home until <laughs> it's paid for, absolutely. Okay, that um, is so cool. But we do try to help everyone start a collection. Yeah. Um, the main mission of Lab Art is that we want to give street art the place it deserves in our history. In art history, I'm sorry. Um, the arts community usually frowns upon street art. It's not considered as a proper art form. Why? Because it, does, it did not hang in museums. That has been changed. Okay. And uh, we have been blessed at Lab Art by becoming the youngest members accepted into the Art Dealers Association of California. When did this happen? Around a month ago. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Holy you so much. So yeah, it brother. actually, you know, it actually validates everything that's in here. Yeah. And every artist that's in here. <laughs> and so I guess we've began accomplishing our mission where, Holy you know, every day we get a little bit closer. Nice. Will you walk us over here and show some artwork and tell us all about more beautiful. This is gore. Wow. That's gorgeous. This is a piece by Devin Gosha. It's actually a, uh, a, uh, 
a, a duo of artists. One really? is Devon, one is Gosha. They go by the name Devon Gosha is one word. Sweet. Um, they've been... Uh, Devon is classically trained. Uh, okay. He's been doing this for years and years and years. Uh, Gosha as well. They met up probably around a year ago, just did a collaboration, and ever since they've been Man, working together. Just one? One, two. Nice. And then a large one over there, which is the big eyes. And you want to take us to Sure. It's this piece here, which is actually one of my favorite pieces in the gallery. Ah, yes, I was, I was looking at that earlier. Yeah, that just takes you away. And the name of the piece is Los Angelina. <laughs> Los Angelina? Yes. Sweet. Oh, that so is... Our Lady of Los Angeles, basically. And it's also Angelina Jolie, so it fits. Beautiful. Hey, um, I'm looking outside and seeing some artwork. Do you see it? What's going on out there? Do you know anything about that? Absolutely. That is pop water. Whoa, who? Pop water is a, uh, is a fizzy water flavored. Okay. Owned by Terry Richardson and Lady Gaga. And they are one of our sponsors for all of our events. And they tend to show up once in a while and bring their uh, Terry girls. And uh, they hand out water. That is so cool. <laughs> well, that is so nice. And of course, they have to get your permission to hang out in front of your building and do this, yes? Absolutely, but since we partner up with them all the time, they have permission. Is that common, uh, uh, partnering up with other people? It's, uh, do you have to answer that phone, by the way? Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> did you put it on uh, the answer machine, get it? I think so, okay. yeah. I'm hoping it did. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we go back into your gallery? Absolutely. Would you show us some of more? Of course. Now, I noticed you have an upstairs. What, uh, what, do you live upstairs? No. Upstairs is my offices, but I rarely get to see my offices. I'm always down here, um, always with clients. But we can take a little peek upstairs. Oh, my goodness. We're getting a scene from oh, behind the stage. Behind the house. Hey, this is the, this is the royal treatment. Thank you. Come on up. Welcome. It's a little messy. I had envi I had envisioned that you had a bunch of artists up here and painting going going to town at this. Oh, this is so nice. This is more of. I a love that. Hey, that's you, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> this piece How'd you is get by this, picture? this piece is by Carl Pauli, uh, also known as Screw Tape, um, and he made this for me as a gift, um, and he titled the piece "Build It and They Will Come." Oh yes, uh, yeah. My so far, uh, all right. I'm allowed to say it. that's one of my that's my favorite so far. <laughs> I love that one. And how about uh, do you, you want to tell us? Oh, what's Let's that? This uh, this piece is by an artist called Desire Obtain Cherish. Um, Could you say that again? This is a piece by one of our artists called Desire Obtain Cherish. Desire it, obtains cherish. Oh, I see. Desire it. Obtain Cherish. Sweet. And so what it is? It's uh, he made this piece. It was during Oscar season last year or the year before and it's the Egyptian flag and so what it says down there is best performance by a country <laughs> this was during the Egyptian revolution the the Arab Spring um, so a little political but also pretty oh, witty now do you look for that in, in, in our work do you, do you does, must it say anything not necessarily not necessarily I mean here are two perfect examples okay they don't really say anything this piece the chimpanzee is by an artist named Gzvala, X-V-A-L-A. Okay. Um, and what it is, we actually did this in collaboration with The Tonight Show. No way. Oh, how do you do that? And you can actually see it in the back. And the title of the show was Celebrity, The Tonight Show with Celebrity Chimp. So what the artist did, what you see here, the diamond dust and the glass, the artist went dumpster diving. Hold on, slow down. Diamond dust? Diamond dust. OMG. Okay, go on. The artist went dumpster diving in Lindsay Lohan, Robert Downey Jr., and Taylor Swift's trash. Took all of their glass, crushed it, mixed it with diamond dust. And that is what you see here. And why it's called The Tonight Show with Celebrity Chimp is because it's his take on uh, making fun of the celebrities on The Tonight Show. <laughs> wow! So every piece has a message. Every piece says something. Um, but it's good to have the backstory. 
how about can we have some backstory on the bicycle? Or are you, yes. This bicycle is by Louis XXX, which this is one of his other pieces. Yeah, I love the triple X. Um, the thing about this bike is we did a show where the artists each embellished a bicycle. <laughs> so each one came out very different, each one came out very beautiful. Um, it's rideable art. Some people purchase the pieces and hang, hung, hang them in their homes. Others are actually riding them in the streets. So I, I'm not allowed to cuss, but I freaking love that. <laughs> Where are we going in here? Oh, I'm a Michael Jackson fan, so I'm loving this. Oh, we're in the pimps. We're in the pimps' house here. Not many people are allowed in here. No, but yeah, this is my office. Excuse the mess. You know, a lot of planning going on here. A lot of. You know. Since we're on a little intimate level here uh, in your office. Um, Tell, tell us about mom and dad real quick. Mom and dad live in LA. Okay. Um, I am they so they 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 love this place. Um, they support as much as they can. Every single so every single show we have here, my parents are always here. No. So yes. No. What did? Uh, uh, okay. So they totally supported you. But was there any um, reservations on their part? I uh, absolutely not. They believed in this project from day one. Okay. Yeah. And as a little boy, were you always wanting to open up your own art gallery? Where, where did you go from little boy to art gallery? Actually, no. I was. Uh, I spent 17 years in the fashion industry in downtown LA. Uh, yeah, sorry, Boo. I forgot to tell. I saw that about you, fashion designer. 17 years in the fashion industry, and how street art came along was that 20 years ago, I used to see Andre the Giants pasted everywhere, which Dude, are you by do the Obey. Obey which are obey. No, I used to see I them I said it everywhere. at the same time you heard that. I used to see them everywhere and I always wondered, what is that? Right. Was it a, is it an ad? Is it What is it? And so every day I would see it on my drive to downtown and coming back home. So it already stirred some um, curiosity. As time went by, time went by, um, the clothing industry began became pretty stale. I was doing high-end denim. Okay. And then, uh, you know, when the H&M's and the Zara's of the world came, came along, you can't really compete. Um, so I opened a small restaurant called Le Petit Saint-Tropez, and I had art hanging on the walls by an artist named Justin Bua, who at the same time was showing at LACMA. And as time went by, I realized I was selling more artwork than food and alcohol combined. Really? So I thought I was onto something. Then a friend of mine in downtown, in the clothing industry, said, come, I have a new line, I want you to see it, a new clothing line. Okay. So I went down to see it, but I was more interested in his space than the actual clothing line. He had 5,500 square feet, he was doing a trade show in Vegas, so the space was empty and it basically looked like a white box. Mm, and I thought... What did you see? You didn't see a white box. Oh no, I said, I want to throw an event. <sighs> and... Uh, I want to bring artwork in here. Let's see what happens. Whatever I saw will split 50-50. He said, sure. 300 people showed up. Alec Monopoly was doing live painting. What? Alec Monopoly was doing live painting oh, during shit. the event. Oh, I cussed. And, uh, Can you say that one more time? Who? Alec Monopoly was doing live painting during the event. And uh, we sold 11 pieces that night. 300 people showed up, as I said, and I thought, this is what I need to be doing. Oh. And literally the next morning I went looking for spaces. Nice. Now, where was that spot? Where was the box at? Here in LA? That was LA? here, downtown LA. Okay. Yes. So to take your uh, work from your building, uh, do you miss downtown or do you love it here? I love it here. Yeah. I love it here. La Brea. I love it here. And when Lab Arts opened here, there wasn't much around us. No. No. There was a Trader Joe's and a Ralph's. Dude, I totally remember all this because I'm, I'm telling you, I, I did my laundry and you were the one that I always looked forward to. Oh, let me go see that. I'd come in, I'd look through the glass. Sometimes they'd be covered. You couldn't look in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're a great sign when you put that sign up Thank and it blinked for everyone. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Thank baby. You hey, you said you got 300 people during uh, your first show. Yes, that was in downtown. How in the, how the, how the hell do you pull 300 people? I sent out emails to 300 of my closest friends. Okay. And they all showed up. Uh, and thank my you. parents showed up to that one as well. Screw you. I was about to ask you that question. So was mom and dad there mom as well? Mom and dad were there. And even dad said, whatever you did that night was great. 
All right, please walk us downtown, uh, d downstairs, back into uh, 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 Lab Art downtown. And hold on a second. I want you to know about Michael. Oh, <laughs> you, come on, come Michael on. You got. Jackson? You ain't done yet. So this is by Alec Monopoly. Um, really? Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, That's this is great. One, I love this piece. This is one of my favorite pieces by Alec Monopoly. Oh, would you please tell us about this picture with Michael Jackson? Who is it by? This piece of Michael Jackson is by Alec Monopoly. This is one of my personal favorites my by favorite. Alec Monopoly. And if you notice in the background, it's the uh, sheet music. Yes. Heal the World. Heal oh, the World by this. Michael Jackson. That's the actual title of the piece. Ah, oh, dude, that that is so cool. Oh, and do you know how long it takes uh, for a piece of art to be done? Um, well, yeah. for Alec, for this piece, I know for a fact it took him around a month okay. to get this piece finished. This one has so much work in it. Uh, did you ever find yourself wanting to do, do, uh, do artwork like this, or by the time you're out of the fashion industry, you want to... Uh, sponsor artist. Well, I am an artist at heart. I uh, I've been painting since I was a kid. I just never show my artwork. Why? I never try to sell it. I, I'm I'm better at Everybody's selling other want people's it. work. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm better at selling other people's work. Oh, do you have anything around that we're allowed to look at that might be yours? It's not here. U S O B. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you you're lucky on that one. <laughs> um, take us downstairs and please tell tell us more about. Uh, I'm going to look at a question because uh, I'm love. I haven't even looked at my questions once now. Oh, that's on. Okay, here we go. Hi, welcome to 28 Minutes. My name is Darren Timothy Numer, and we are here at the world-famous Art Lab, and our guests... Fuck me. <laughs> lab Art. Fuck, fuck, I didn't do my homework. I did do my homework, but dyslexia pulled up. All right, good old dyslexia. We can always blame our shit on that. Here we go. Five, four, tres, dos, uno. Hi, welcome to... My WeHo World, this edition of 28 Minutes. My name is Darren Timothy Numer, and my guests today are, their names are... Iskander. And Bryden. And these gentlemen are incredible artists slash art dealers, is that right? Would we say that? Art dealer. Gallerist. Gallerist and artists, and they are also both clothing designers at one point in their life. Is that right, guys? Correct. True. And we are here at the Lab Art on La Brea Avenue over in Los Angeles, California. Do yourselves a favor, look this, uh, look all this up on the computer and find out exactly where we're at and come down and see. What are, what are the hours that you're open? Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You're talking to Ish uh, Iskander and he is the, what do you say, the owner? The owner of Lab Art. And next to you, who's sitting next to you? Would you? This is my good friend, Brighton Lando. Brad, what are you doing, babe? Uh, I just wrapped a solo exhibition here at this wonderful gallery space, and uh, I'm just hanging out. Nice. Can we ask a couple of uh, some fun questions so that the audience can get to know the two of you and see where you stand in life with these questions? It's just kind of fun. When I say, and I'm going to give it both to you, we're going to start with you, and then you, it's coming up, so you get to hear the question prior. When I say the word beautiful, what do you think of? Ocean woman <laughs> women ocean yeah <laughs> i saw that coming all right when i say the word hate what do you think of mm, war i was actually going to say that um uh, anger nice real nice when i say the word family what do you think of my parents and my brother <laughs> Yeah, you didn't have to go too no, far in the box with that one. It's sort of an image. <laughs> My mom. Your mom? My mom. Nice. Um, how soon do you think the government's going to be shut down? Mm. Or did I say that right? Yeah, it's not how down. soon? Yeah. You mean <laughs> reopen? <laughs> <laughs> how soon? <laughs> Fuck you, Bob. <laughs> Hand clip. <laughs> Edit that one. All right. How soon do you think the closing of the government shutdown? Ugh, fudge. How the hell do you ask this question? When do you think the government will be out? Here we go. It's going to be irrelevant in a month or two. Anyway. All right, this question may be irrelevant in a, <laughs> in a month or two, but right now we're experiencing a shutdown of the government. Guys, how long do we have to put up with this? Mm, as long as we have to. Uh, sorry. 
Don't you dare. Continue. No. What are you saying? Uh, as long as we're in the Middle East. Ooh. I have to agree with that. <laughs> yeah, see, they knew more than I do. I don't even want to know that. And indefinitely. No! No! Uh, okay, just on a uh, nice thing. Uh, how, how did you two meet, please? Uh, we met through a mutual friend, actually. Okay. I heard you say this. What's your side of the story? It's exactly that. Um, this mutual friend of ours called me and said, hey, I want you to meet this artist, uh, check out his artwork. And uh, fast forward a couple of months after that, and we had a solo show. What, uh, what do you look for in an artist to be able to uh, want to show his artwork off? Um, they need to have their own personal identity. They have to come up with something new. I mean, it, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, but at least you have your own, uh, your own hand in certain pieces. Um, I mean, whenever I look at Bryden's pieces, I know they are his and not another artist's, as all the other artists in here. I mean, they're quite uh, uh, recognizable in their styles. Nice. And Bryden, in LA, we've got a truckload of galleries. What made you pick this place? to show off your artwork? I mean, it has such a great reputation and, um, you know, it is the largest street art gallery in the, um, in the nation and uh, they just have such a great roster of artists and people that have shown here. So, you know, it's sort of the number one spot I would, uh, would want to show at. So I feel very fortunate uh, to have my stuff hanging in here. And I have to say, our openings are fun. Yeah. Our parties are great. I can testify to that. Randy and I were here at the opening of your show, and uh, it started off immediately. They were walking through the door, not even at, uh, what time? You started at 8 o'clock, if I remember. 7, seven o'clock, and then by 7, oh, no, actually 6.54, they were already at the door knocking, and uh, I was one of them. Um, I, uh, sure. I'm not a bassist already, but That's okay. maybe we could define what is street art. Okay, cool. Yeah, do you, you all with that? Did you ask that already? Uh, no, I don't think we did. Did you hear that question? You have to ask it. Okay, here we go. Um, here's kind of a uh, kind of a tricky question, almost. But uh, in in your, we'll start off with you, and then we'll come back over to you. Well, how do you define street art? Art that's on the street. You son of a! <laughs> come on. No, it's uh, you know people expressing themselves in uh, and their creativity on um, on unusual spaces. I think is it mostly illegal? Most of it, but it's getting. I think people are now realizing the importance and value in street art and um, you know expressing themselves creatively outside of galleries. So people are wanting to hang that in their in their house, which is great for. All of the street artists in the right. world. Right on. How about uh, uh, what's your what's your opinion on that, please? Well, I have to agree with what Bryden said, but also street art is where I think the artists use the city as their canvas um, to express themselves. Um, but the thing about street art, by definition, is that it doesn't last. And what we try to do here is we is try to make it eternal. We try to give it a life, and we you know, through people who purchase it, put it, put it in their homes and their offices, it lives on forever. The, in my opinion, I, I find that uh, for street art, okay, you know what, let me twist this around just a little bit. What's your opinion on those with a spray can and are just doing graffiti on the walls? Um, I think it was, uh, I don't know, there was some quote from some street artist who said, I don't believe in signing your name on something that you yourself didn't create. So if, um, you know, if somebody is just going around and randomly tagging their name, I don't really, um, you know, that's, that's, not, um, that's not my favorite thing in the world, but to each their own, you know. How about you? Do you have an opinion on that? Well, I do. It's, it's actually true. I mean, graffiti is also an art form. Um, Which I agree with. Anything could be an art form, but I mean, here at Lab Art, we only specialize in street art and not graffiti. Yeah. So it's more, uh, it's more imagery rather than words. 
Yeah, I found out about a, three months ago, I followed a tagger. And this was like a 45-year-old fat bastard man on a bicycle with a small can of purple spray paint. And as he's riding down the street, he was like this. And, and I got so mad because it was my neighborhood. And I followed him for about a, uh, I'm embarrassed to say, but for about a half an hour. <laughs> he he finally got a clue that oh, he was like oh I recognize that car and he started to walk towards me and he was doing some weird things at the bus stop and I thought oh now I see the difference between street art and taggers so uh, yeah um, we love what you're doing and thank you so much for your uh, building and your gallery here thank you for your art and showing it to us thank do you have anything out there that you want to say to mom and dads by before we shout out I love you mom ah. I just talked to my mom yesterday, so I'm good. <laughs> well, we love, we say we love him. I love your mom, right? Yep, love you, mom. <laughs> and we love you, Los Angeles. Thank you so much. And I love you too, mom. For Randy, love your mom out there in Texas. Thank you, Jan and Joel, uh, Jan Foster and Joel Q. Thank you, my WeHo world. And thank you, 28 Minutes. We'll see you next week or very sooner than that. Thanks.